Tangent is a really small concept in terms of the curriculum. We're going to focus on it, do a couple of questions, but just so you know, we're not going to be talking about transformations, so we're not changing the function. We just need to be familiar with what the graph looks like, and then the special parts like amplitude, domain, range, period, x and y intercepts. And we'll look at a couple of problems to solve that as well. So, same thing that I did for sine and cosine. This is how I'm going to generate the graph for tangent. So back to our unit circle, and I'm going to be in degrees. So you can see that all of the yellow ones here, those are all my degrees. I'm going to put that in a table of values under my x value. And then y value is going to be the tangent. Now remember, tangent is sine divided by cos. So since tangent is equal to sine of theta divided by cos of theta, and all of these trig ratios have a denominator of 2, all I have to do is take the numerator of y, which is sine, divided by the numerator of x, which is cosine. So right in the middle there, I just have a reminder on how we do that. So basically, tan of theta is just going to be y over x. So it's going to be our y value divided by our x value. And since they all have a numerator, or sorry, a denominator of 2, we can just focus on the numerators. So for example, I'm going to plot 0 with 0 divided by 1. I'm going to plot 30 with 1 divided by root 3. 45 with root 2 divided by root 2, and so on. So putting that into my table, it's going to look like this. So I have my table of degrees versus tangent. I have two exact values that I'm working with. 1 over root 3 is going to be about... 0.5774. So I know that this is 1 over root 3. I know that down here this is negative 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, and negative 1 over root 3. The other exact value I have is just root 3, which is about 1.7. So I know that this is root 3, negative root 3, root 3, and negative root 3. The other thing that I want to point out that's really important is the quadrantal angles. So tan is 0 when sine is 0. So you can see it's 0 at 0 degrees, 180, and 360. And you can see that on our graph. 0 degrees, 180, and 360. Now tan is undefined because we have a quotient here. We have um, numerator over denominator. Any time the denominator, which is cosine, equals to 0. So it's undefined when cos is equal to 0. So you can see it's undefined here at 90 degrees and 270. In terms of my graph, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 90 and x equal to 270. So plotting the points, they look like this. So let's just connect the dots. So here, I'm going to be increasing. Here, kind of almost looks like a cubic function. And then here, decreasing. So that's what the graph of tangent looks like. Let's look at the graph of degrees and radians side by side here. And we're just going to take a minute to talk about the asymptotes. So since tan is sine over cosine, tan is undefined anytime cos is 0, because division by 0 is not allowed. Therefore, the vertical asymptotes of tan are the x-intercepts of cos. So you can see those x-intercepts starting at 90 degrees and happening every 180 which means that my domain is that x can't be 90 degrees plus multiples of 180 or pi over 2 plus multiples of pi. Now let's look at some facts about tan. The period of tan is 180 degrees, which is the distance between those vertical asymptotes. Because you see I have these, that shape, between all my vertical asymptotes. So the distance between my vertical asymptotes, like if you look at the distance between here, pi over 2 to the left, pi over 2 to the right, all together has a distance of pi. Or 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right, the distance between that is 180 degrees. That's why the period is 180. If we go back to the cast rule, another reason that it is 180 is because look where 10 is positive. So to go from quadrant 1 to quadrant 3, that's 180 degrees apart. Look where 10 is negative. 10 is negative in quadrant 2 and 4. And those are also 180 degrees apart. This is the only ratio that this works for, is tangent, and then, of course, cotangent. But the period is 180 or pi. The distance between the vertical asymptotes, 
four because where 10 is positive and negative in the coordinate system is also 180 degrees apart. Now those arms of the graph are Buzz Lightyear arms because they extend to infinity and beyond. So they keep going. Because they do extend infinitely in both directions, that means there's no max, no min, and no amplitude. Meaning the range is just y is an element of the reals. Now we talked about this before, but worth noting again, the x-intercepts of tangent are the same as the x-intercepts of sine. So they're going to happen in multiples of 180. So 0, 180, 360, or in the negative direction, negative 180, negative 360, and so on. The y-intercept is right at the origin at 0. So we're going to take all of these main ideas for tangent, and we're going to compare them to two different graphs here, tan of 2x, and then we're going to do tan of a half x in the next one. So let's just talk about the graph of tan x first. And I'm just going to summarize everything that we had before. So we had that the period is pi, the vertical asymptotes are pi over 2 plus pi n. The x-intercept is x equal to pi n. Our domain was the x, the set of all x such that x cannot equal to pi over 2 plus multiples of pi n, where n is an element of the reals, and my range, no restrictions, the set of all y such that y is an element of the reals. Okay, so we're going to compare this, all these base rules of tan x, we're going to compare that to two different functions. So let's look at my first function. I have tan of 2x, so I have a b value of 2, which means I have a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. So I'm going to take all of these amounts here and I'm going to multiply them by half, which means that this graph is going to have a period of pi over 2. Multiply everything by a half. This means that the vertical asymptote is going to be x equal to pi over 4, plus pi over 2n. The x-intercepts, I also multiply that by a half. So my x-intercepts are going to happen at multiples of pi over 2. My domain, also going to multiply by a half. So my domain is going to be the set of all x such that x cannot equal to pi over 4, plus pi over 2n, where n is an element of the reals. And my range remains unchanged. So that stays the same. Okay, so that's what I can say about tan of 2x compared to my base. Let's look at another example where we are dealing with tan of 1 half x. So tan of 1 half x, b is a half, which means my horizontal stretch is by a factor of 2. So that means I'm going to take all of these and times them by 2 to get my new amounts. Okay, so over here the period is going to be 2 pi. My vertical asymptote times by 2 cancels the denominator. It's going to be pi plus 2 pi n. My x-intercepts are going to happen in multiples of 2 pi n. My domain is going to be the set of all x such that x can't equal to pi plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of the reals. And lastly, my range. My range remains unchanged. Okay, so that would be all of the facts for 1 half x, tan of 1 half x. Let's look at a diploma example for tan. So, for this one here, given that f of theta equals cos n theta has the same period as the graph of g, g of theta equals tan theta, what is the value of n? So let's start over here. This one here has a period of pi radians. So tangent graph has a period of pi radians. Cos, using our formula for period, period is 2 pi divided by my b value. So this is 2 pi divided by n. So these periods are the same. This period is the same as this period. So let's make them equal and solve for n. 
Well, the only way that this can be true, 2 pi divided by what number gives me pi, is if n was equal to 2, because 2 divided by 2 would be 1. So to make them the same, your n value would be 2. Let's just try one more example. So the point 21 pi over 4 in k is on the graph of y equals 10x. Determine the exact value of k. So if this point is on the graph, that means that this is an x value and this is a y value. Let's substitute that into my equation. So I have y equals to tan of 21 pi over 4. Now, 21 pi over 4, that's greater than 2 pi. So it's gone around the unit circle a couple of times. So let's look. Let's subtract multiples of 2 pi to get at what my angle in standard position is, my principal angle. So 21 pi over 4 take away 2 pi is the same as 13 pi over 4. So that's still greater than 2 pi. So let's subtract another 2 pi. So 13 pi over 4 take away 2 pi is 5 pi over 4. And that is less than 2 pi, so we can stop there. So on the unit circle, I want to look at the point 5 pi over 4. So I know that's in quadrant number 3, and on the unit circle, it actually has coordinates of negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. So to figure out what the tangent is, the tangent of this angle is going to be the same, tan of 21 pi over 4 is going to be the same as tan of 5 pi over 4 because these two angles are coterminal. And looking at that, remember that tangent is numerator of y divided by numerator of x, so negative root 2 over negative root 2, which means that I have a k value of 1. So k is equal to 1. Okay, let's summarize our lesson. So y equals tan x is the ratio of sine over cos. So because cos is in the denominator, the x-intercepts of cos are the vertical asymptotes of tangent. Because sine x is in the numerator, sine x and tan x have the same x-intercepts. Remember that tan has a period of 180 degrees or pi radians. So now that the weather is becoming nicer, I want you guys to pay attention when you're going outside to wear sunscreen. You should wear sunscreen all the time. Um, otherwise, you might get sunburned. Or in this case, using sunscreen, you could make tan lines.